Hello, I'm Mary B. Today, let's talk about how to play a strange violin. So, I've got my, um, my violin is in for repair and the repairers, the shop, lent me a bow and a violin and a case. And uh, it's a Scottish violin, actually. It's very nice. Um, it's, let me just see, uh, there's a label inside and it says Dick Webster, Bathgate, approximately 1890. So that, that's a modern um, label, um, but they, they must know. So it's, it's rather nice because it's got a double purfling on it, which is the black lines around the outside. It's very pretty. Um, and it's very well cared for and nice, but it's incredibly alien <laughs> to me. I mean, it's the, kind of almost the opposite of my violin. So that feels very difficult to play, and you must have experienced this yourself when someone says, oh, I've got a violin, and they shove it under your, your chin, and but all violins have got incredibly different frequencies. And um, it seems to me that this violin hasn't really been played in a refined way very much. Um, maybe this is the violin that they use to lend out to lots of people. So the violin's a bit sort of unsettled and everything, but. Um, and also it's got a really, really big, thick, heavy neck. <laughs> it's really surprising. It's totally different from mine. Um, very, very heavy. You know, it feels um, like, a, like a, a, it's almost overbalanced, but it's not, I suppose. Um, and the positions, the positions of where the notes are incredibly alien. I don't know where anything is. I haven't managed to play this violin in tune yet. But the thing I wanted to show you was how to play a strange violin that you're given or um, you're having temporarily, or even if you bought a new instrument and it's still new to you, and how to get the instrument to start vibrating um, a bit more in tune with your vibrations, the way that you're using the bow. So um, this is a quite a common thing for violinists to have to deal with. So um, let's have a look at it. So let me play you the violin and you can hear what it's like. So the first thing I think is I don't want to make this particular sound so that goes out of the window. I'm quite free of trying to make it sound like a sound that I want. So that leaves me with making the violin the way that this violin wants to sound as nice as possible. So um, I've got a sound in my head that I love and my violin, my own violin is very close to that. This isn't. So the sound is alien, so I'm giving that up, that's fine. I'm not going to try making that sound, and as a matter of fact, that gives my muscles a bit of a holiday, and it gives me a chance to know um, what kind of muscular effort and mental effort I'm making in order to play my own violin. So I see this as a bit of a um, fantastic opportunity to um, have a look at what my body is doing, what my impulses are doing on a strange violin because you can get a lot of insight into what you've been doing just to have a holiday from your own instrument. Your body is has vibrations and the impulses come through the, the bow really and the violin has the potential for vibrations, it does vibrate as soon as you draw the bow across the string, there's a vibration. And with a violin and a, a strange violin and yourself, this, this is myself and this is the violin, it's like they're vibrating differently and it feels very uncomfortable. And the goal is to make it come together so that you're comfortable and you can actually sort of forget about it in a way. So um, one way to do it is to
third position. I don't know where it is on this. Now, there's a, a rather nice note with a bit of potential. I hear something different in it. That, that note with my very, very white vibrato oscillate in the air and, and then I go to nothing and then I oscillate it and as I'm doing that it purifies the vibrations and takes the grit out of the note. There's a lot of grit in these notes but it doesn't have to be, it just needs to be refined by certain bow strokes and certain intentions. So that's what I'm doing with, with that. It's already a little bit more refined, that note. Now on this violin I wouldn't use wide vibrato anyway because it brings out sort of um, certain um, under undercurrents of, of the vibration that um, uh, they're not so good. It's better to sort of rise to above <laughs> with the violin notes, really. So um, let's get another note and see if we can sort of hear the grit and then hear it getting better. There, there's a grit in that note. Let's refine it. is giving this string an opportunity to vibrate at different um, uh, lengths of time. I'm doing very short, very long, loud, soft. So I'm um, giving the string uh, a little bit more of an experience rather than just one experience. For example, supposing a learner has been playing on this. <laughs> are nice and clear but there's no refinement and you can introduce refinement very quickly into a violin by giving it um, the opportunity to respond uh, more quickly more slowly just a wider range of experience you see what I mean so um, often the strings have only one experience and that's how they the, the violin isn't being asked to vibrate at any different frequencies but the, the violin vibrates at all frequencies if it's in tune with you. So you're tuning this violin, you're introducing more and more frequencies and it refines the sound because the violin finds frequencies in the wood, in the space, um, to produce into the air. And that very much um, is why you should use a lot of colour, you should use a lot of difference and give the violin a tremendous amount of experience just in a short time. For example, um, if someone thrusts a violin to you and while you're um, tuning it and getting ready to play, um, you can go. Now that, just that short burst will give the violin something different um, if, it, if, they, if it's been stuck in a cupboard doing nothing the violin um, loses the familiarity with the vibration that, um, and, and a lot of violins haven't been explored fully, they haven't been vibrated fully um, into all the spaces, all the nooks and crannies that are possible in a violin and as you do that the violin is able to respond and you feel more and more comfortable. So I mean this is 
not, not a bad violin, it's just not the sound I want, but I still know how to draw and wake this violin up, okay? There are things in that note, I don't know whether you can hear them. It's almost asleep. It doesn't realise that there are so many sounds that it could possibly make. Higher sounds, better vibrations, leave the grit behind. So that's my, <laughs> that's the conception um, that you can have and it's very, very useful to wake up your violin. And I do that with my own violin that I've been playing for um, over is it over 30 years now? Um, I do that with, with my own violin to um, explore the further reaches in colour and it always responds. I, I haven't come to the end of it. When I get my violin back from the repairers, I will be exploring possibly new stuff. Um, it'll feel very, very different because it's getting a, a new fingerboard, new bridge and soundpost. So um, it can be a great pleasure exploring, waking a violin up and knowing how to do it just quickly. And then you can play something rather nice. Um, wasn't I me and the, the, this violin weren't in tune all the time in terms of vibrations but um, it, it's enjoyable it's a violin to explore so I hope that that has helped you and uh, I'll see you next time bye for now